Uh, we're also pleased that Justice Jering Wanchuk of the Bhutan Supreme Court has at the last moment agreed to, to say a few words. So thank you, please. Eminent pan panelists, honorable judges and justices and judges, distinguished delegates. Since I'm the last one in the graveyard shift, so please indulge me. <laughs> I come from a very small jurisdiction, Bhutan, but who has, the nation has been blessed to have benevolent and far-sighted kings. And it is their wisdom and their dedication to protecting our limited resources based on the philosophy and understanding that environment is a common legacy and it is our responsibility to preserve for the future generations. Bhutan's commitment to environmental conservation has been commended and recognized by the World Environment Organization being awarded with the Champion of the Earth Award in 2004-2005. His Majesty, the fourth king, has been awarded the Conservation Leadership Award 2006 by the World Wildlife Fund. It has been recognized as one of the biodiversity hotspots and endemic bird areas. Article 5, ladies and gentlemen, of the Constitution of Bhutan is dedicated to environment, and this further strengthens and consolidates the policy on the protection and conservation of the environment. It incorporates the doctrines of public trust, imposing responsibility on both the state and the citizens. It also has the doctrine of intergenerational equity and the requirement that 60% of the land surface must be under forest cover at all times. This is Bhutan's commitment to environmental conservation. This symposium has provided for an opportunity to deliberate and share experiences, to collectively understand that natural capital is essential to all aspects of life. With the growth of roughly comparable judicial institutions across our region, and with ever increasing fundamental problems we face, the Asian Judges Network on Environment will provide the plat platform to learn from the judicial solutions adopted by each of our nations and adapt it to suit the needs and circumstances existing in our own countries. <laughs> Often public policy making suffers because of policy paralysis. We fail to make the right choices because of clarity in choosing the choices which must be avoided. Further, its proper implementation is often hindered by misapplication, abuse of authority, and corruption. When this happens, there must be a strong judiciary that upholds the rule of law. An essential condition for realizing the judicial role is public confidence. Confidence in judicial independence, fairness, impartiality, and ethical standards of the judges in the impartial search for truth and the delivery of justice based on principles and fundamental values. Judges must take interest and responsibility in ensuring that our judiciaries grow, adapt through periodic and timely reforms, build better systems of justice and institutions. I would like to believe that I have now a reasonable understanding of the concept of natural capital, which must be supported by sound planning educated and creative strategies, and advocacy, followed by efficient and competent execution. In conclusion, I believe that human beings have always had the ingenuity, courage, and faith to succeed in the face of adversity. Hence, we have the opportunity and must together become a part of the solution and take forward this concept of natural capital. In the context of Bhutan, I take the responsibility of disseminating inf the necessary information and to endeavor to promote training to establish and to establish a green bench. There is an old Chinese saying which says that a few minutes with a wise man is worth more than hours of education. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely thank all the speakers and all the distinguished participants for I have learned much in this, con in this conference. Thank you and touch delay.